what we're going to stitch next are the decorative elements and the leaves and the stars and things around the outside edge. So I've already done here, I've stitched this moon and used the whipped back stitch. I've also stitched the stem of this little branch of leaves, also the whipped back stitch, the trusty whipped back stitch. And for the leaves, the or the outline of the leaves, we're going to just couch the thread. And I know I talked about couching a little bit earlier with the bugle beads, but this is just plain old couch thread. So I've already done this one, and I have brought up, I've got three strands of thread on my needle, and a lot of times when I am couching thread, I tend to use six strands because when you um, when you do couch it, when you put the thread over it, it really compresses those threads and, and makes them look smaller. So even six strands of thread can look quite a bit skinnier, narr more narrow um, after you've couched them. But here I'm using three strands because I have kind of a small leaf and I'm going to be putting some elements inside of it so I don't want it to be a big thick outline. So that's why I use three strands in this instance. But I've already come up here and so as, as before with the couching really you just you have your surface thread and then I have my couching thread which is one strand same color and I'm gonna I always take this hand and I move this thread out of the way and come up on the line and go over that thread and go ah, it's that fabric okay go down and when you have when you're couching curves, this is a very slight curve, but the um, this, the tighter if you have a really tight curve, you're going to want to put your couching stitches closer together. Uh, if you have just straight lines or really soft curves, you can put them a little further apart. But anytime I come to a point or a corner or a hard you know hard point like this, I always come up on that point. You know it doesn't matter if you bring this needle up on the outside of your thread or the you know the outside of the thread or the inside it doesn't matter because it's going to look the same but I come up at the point I bring that thread over I go down sorry and then what I do if I just if I just come around that curve and I pull this thread up see how that it, it doesn't keep it doesn't hold that point right there so on the back side I am going to take my couching thread and I'm going to hold on to it and I'm going to sort of give it a little bit of tension and pull on it so that now when I bring this thread up see how that doesn't move that's because I'm pulling the couching thread the one strand from the back so that it stays tight against that fabric right there so I can move this however I need so that's going to give me a nice sharp point so I'm going to now bring this one up this way and of course I do have to let go of that thread on the back to you know bring the needle up but it does stay in place and so now I'm going to pull this thread all the way through before I pull on this thread again so I'm pulling on this one so that it's keeping that couching stitch tight I can come over here pull that thread into the you know out of the way so I can see it and then make that couching stitch and I'll do one more stitch to hold that thread in place So you see how it got such a nice point on it? That wouldn't have stayed uh, like a sharp point if I hadn't been pulling on that thread from the back. So now that I've come to the end of my shape, I'll take, this is the three strands, and I'll just take the needle down right back on that point. And pull it all the way through. So now I can go over to the next one. And let me talk here just briefly about um, running your threads across the back side. This is a dark color of thread. And if I was working on white fabric, I would not, I brought the, I took the thread down, the needle down right here. I would not come across here and jump across and just bring my needle up here if I was working with white fabric because that dark thread on the back of the white fabric could very well show through from the back. This orange fabric is kind of it's kind of on the line between if it's light enough or dark enough to hide it. I have been taking my thread across and I think it's going to be okay. Obviously if you've got black or gray or really dark fabrics you can just run threads all over the back and you'll never see them from the front. But I think, I hope anyway, that on this orange fabric 
it will be okay to run a dark thread across the back. So I'll do one more leaf for you. And I'm finding on these little teardrop shaped leaves that a couching stitch on the tip, two along the sides, well one on the first tip of the leaf, two on the sides, Holding that thread on the back again. Pulling it again tight so it holds that in place while I get this thread in the right place. One more stitch along this curve. And I will take that one down at the tip. And move on to the next leaf. To fill the insides of these leaves, we're going to do put two different stitches. The first one we're going to do is a daisy stitch in a in a lighter blue, three strands, and um, these the the daisy stitches are only going to be on the sort of the top two thirds of this leaf. So leave a little bit of space down here at the bottom for the knot that we're going to put down there in the middle. So our just our classic daisy stitch. up, go down where you came up, hold that loop, maybe my little corgi needle minder there will help me along, hold that hoop, I mean that loop, and then come up inside the loop, pull forward, and go down. The last thing we need to fill these little leaves is this very nice bright green French knot right here at the other end opposite from the daisy stitch. So three strands of the bright green thread and I'm going to wrap twice. There's one knot and the last one. Let's all hope it doesn't mess up because I've had that happen. You're on the very last knot and the whole thing gets all messed up. All right, yay, that one worked. The branch of leaves that's at the top is the exact same uh, thing as the blue one that we did on the bottom. Uh, same number of strands and everything, just different colors, and you can see the color chart for which colors go where. Concentrating now on the motifs that are at the bottom center of the hoop, uh, we've already did the moons, and I went ahead and I sewed on the green beads. Just a simple, you know, just use one strand of the green thread, and they, these are standing on their sides. Um, these, let me talk about up here. This is really simple, obviously. Um, I just used the dark pink and the light pink. Um, this is the stems of the whipped back stitch. The little loops are daisy stitch, and of course the French knots. I think those are three strands with uh, wrapped two times for those French knots. And then now that we've done pretty much all of our stitching, we can start adding sequins and all the other sequins and beads. So um, obviously the green sequin here, and this is a, one of those sequins that's cupped, but I flipped it over so that it is um, more like a dome. I mean, it's a flat dome, but I didn't want it to look so much like a cupped sequin. I wanted it to be look more like a, a little dome. So that one's flipped over, and this one is attached with a French knot uh, with three strands and uh, wrapping the needle twice. You have to be careful when you're attaching sequins with French knots. Sometimes the holes in the sequins are bigger, so you have to make sure your French knot is large enough that the sequin doesn't just slide right off. If that does happen, if you're or if you want a little bit of extra security, you can put a little dot of glue under that sequin. I would sew it down, sew it down really securely with the French knot, and then just kind of pry it up a little bit and get a, a toothpick with a little bit of glue on the end and stick a little bit of glue under there and that will help the sequin make sure to stay on the fabric. And then these three beads, and very straightforward, dark pink, the green, and the, uh, the light pink. The 
only difference is that for these, I did try to make them sit on their sides so that the hole is facing up. No reason other than just the fact that I want them to look a little bit different than these right here, but if you want to do them on the sides, that's fine. Um, it's just the thing to remember about the when you're uh, putting a bead on, on its side is that you um, can come up in the middle of, you know, bring your needle up, thread your bead on, go down on the outside of the bead, and then to, and then make sure it's on its side, and then instead of trying to come up inside the middle of the bead, which is really hard, trying to come up from the bottom under the fabric and hit that hole of that bead is really hard. So just come, br uh, bring your needle up on the outside of the bead on the opposite side, and then go down into the center of your bead, and that, as long as your stitches are on opposite sides of the bead, the bead should stay um, stable. It shouldn't shift around too much, but really simple to do. So now let's talk about this starburst over here. This one's finished, and I've started here. I started with a medium, uh, the, the lighter, the bubblegum pink bead in the center. It's on its side, and now I've got uh, four. I'm going to have four of the bugle beads. So I really, I'm using the same pink thread for these bugle beads. It doesn't really matter. I just had it on my needle already from the pink bead. And I'm going to come up as close as I can to that center pink bead. Let me come over here and get a bugle bead and put it on my needle. And I'm going to, like I've done with all the others, I'm going to push it as close as I can get it to that that bead and then put my needle down on the line and that should hold that in place. Now I'm not going to knot this pink thread on the back. I'm really just going to park it over somewhere else out of the way and now I can come over oops, sorry for making the camera move. I can come over here and I can get my dark blue thread to make over here you can see it, these lines, the, the, um, the up and down lines, the horizontal and vertical lines here and here. So super simple straight stitches with this thread on each of these. Just come up right on the line, right next to that uh, bugle bead. And do the same thing with the light blue thread on those diagonal lines. Doesn't matter what order you do them in. And since I left my pink, my single strand of pink thread on my needle, I can just use it now to attach these four pink beads that go on the outside. Let me come over to my bowl and get one of those beads and slide it down. And if you'll remember when I was talking about doing the beads, and I see that one wanted to sit on its side. I mean, sit with the hole facing up. I want it to be on its side, so I'm going to sort of manipulate it a little bit. Uh, when I was talking about the beads up when we were doing the wings, how you can sort of influence how the bead sits by the direction of your stitch. So on that stitch, I want that bead to be sitting this way. So I made my stitch go across it. And then the ones on the side, the stitch will run up and down so that hopefully the bead will sit in the direction that I want. Like that. But that's really being super picky. If you guys don't want to be that picky, just sew the bead on there and move on. It'll be great. It'll look fine. pink bead. And 
then all that's left is to do the green beads that are at the ends of the um, those diagonal lines. And let me come over and get, I do want to, you know, if you wanted to use the pink thread for that, that'd be fine. But I'm going to use the one strand of the green thread just so that I've used green thread with a green bead since those beads are a little bit um, transparent. that green bead that doesn't want to behave sometimes and sit the way I want it to sit. I guess it's just going to do what it wants to do. Oops, that's a little bit far away from that stitching, that line. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Someone has decided to start up some sort of loud machine out front. I have no idea what that is. So that's lovely. Hopefully you can't hear that. So anyway, that little starburst is all finished. And I really love doing those. It's fun to combine the stitching and both types of beads. Next, let's do all of the beads and sequins along the side here. And while we're in this area, we can go ahead and do the beads and sequins that are on the wings. So I'm going to start with the green sequins um, because they are, at least on the sides over here, are attached with French knots. And uh, so I'm going to do these two up here. And so let me see. The first one is the smaller sequin. So just come up in the center. I'm using three strands here. And I think I mentioned before that when I um, thread the sequin onto the needle, I want the sequin to face down and not be faced up so it's not cupped. Because these are not flat sequins, they are cupped sequins. Whoops. Ah, why did that happen? Okay, let's try again. All right, so there's my sequin flat against the fabric. And now I will do a French knot. For this smaller sequin, I am going to wrap the thread twice. So one, two, go back down into the hole. And then when I when it comes to this large sequin up here, I'm come up right in the center of that. And here is the big sequin. You can see it's pretty big. And it's a little bit flatter, but it still has a little bit of a, it's a, just a cupped a little bit. And because this is a large sequin, oh wait, that one's too big. I got the wrong size. Hang on, let me go get the right size. That sequin was too big. This is the right size sequin. And again, it's still cupped a little bit, so I'm going to thread it on my needle so that it's facing down, kind of. All right, that's right. But even though since, even though this one is a little bit bigger, or since this one is a little bit bigger, uh, the hole runs the risk of being a little bit larger, so I'm going to do a larger French knot. So this time I am going to wrap the thread four times just to be extra sure that it'll stay on. So there's one, two, three, four. And as I mentioned before, I don't want to, I want those wraps to be sort of, you know, loose on this needle, but not uh, too loose. So just a little bit of tension. Put that end of the needle into the hole, hold that down, give, hold onto the thread with my other hand and pull that through and that makes a nice big French knot. So now knot the thread on the back and then you can start over for all of these. We're going to be doing uh, beads so we'll just need one strand of thread on the smaller needle. The bead that goes right here is going to be the dark pink bead. I'm just going to bring that up here and put it on like this. 
And this one, you know, if you wanted to sit on its side, that's fine. But I kind of wanted these along the edges here of the fabric to sit so that the hole faces up. So I, I kind of talked about this earlier when we're doing that, uh, the, either the moons or the starbursts, I don't remember which, but it maybe didn't make sense. So let me show you what I'm talking about to get a bead to sit on its, um, I don't know, the bottom of it. And so it faces up. I'm not quite sure how to say that. but So the hole is facing up now, so I'm going to take the needle down on this side. Make sure I don't get the knot. I take it down on this side of the bead. And be careful that I don't pull it so hard that I flip it up on its side because it will want to do that. And then I can come up on the opposite side of the bead like that. and then go back down through the center. So I still have the pink thread on my needle, and so now I'm just gonna hop over here to this one because it's close by, it's the same bead. I'll do the exact same thing. Put the dark pink bead on my needle. Go down on one side. What I was trying to say earlier is when I first started doing these, I tried to, after I put my first stitch in, I tried to hold onto the bead and come up through the center of the bead. And I just, I was poking around in the back forever and it pushes the bead over and that just was not working. So now I, I've learned to come on the opposite side of the bead. Oh, it wanted to flip on me and then go down in the center. And you have a lot more control over the bead. It doesn't flip and um, it's just it just works out so much easier so the next dark pink bead is going to be this one right here and just try to go around and do all the ones that have pink thread or that are pink beads that would use pink thread so i don't have to constantly be switching needles And the, let me, I'm going to, should I hop back over here? Yeah, I'll hop back over to this one here on the tip of the wing is the medium, the bubblegum, what I, what I keep calling the bubblegum pink bead. Same thing. It really wanted to flip. And like I said, if, if these were on their sides instead of facing up, that would be perfectly fine. And then there's a dark pink bead right here. Ooh, almost dropped that one. Almost went across the room. The reason you do it on opposite sides is because if you just if you didn't do it on opposite sides, it might still want to flip on its side. And so now I think I am going to I think I have enough thread on my needle. I'm going to jump way over here to the pink bead that is that's a green one, and this is a medium a bubblegum pink one. So I'm going to do this one. One more of those same beads that goes over here. I don't know if you can see this. For this part, since I'm using different beads all the time, put paper behind it. I just put all my different beads and sequins that I was going to be using into this bowl. So I just put a few, or you know, roughly how many I would need in this bowl, so I didn't have to just keep opening packages that, you know, for each one. This is a bubblegum pink. And now, 
So the sequin that goes right here, um, I am going to do uh, attach with a bead. And so I'm going to come jump over, come up right in the center. And I need to get one of those sequins out. So let me go get that. You know what? I totally changed my mind on that. The one that I've done over here, I attached with a bead, and I just have never liked it. The bead just never sat right on top of here. So I'm going to switch that, and I'm going to make this one over. I'm going to make both of them. I'll change this one out. But I tried a bead to hold it on, and it just, I don't know, it just never, that bead just rolls around up there. It doesn't look good. So I'm going to switch back to three strands of the pink thread and do the same thing I did over there with the French knots. So I'm going to do four times around. One, two, three, four. There. I'm going to be much happier because that little French knot is going to stay in the center and the bead just flipped over to the side and it didn't stay in place. I never really liked it. So I'm going to switch that one out a little bit later. But for now, this one is going to be attached with the French knot. Now I can go back to my one strand to do these beads over here. So I'll hop over here. I still have it threaded from before with the other pink beads. This is the dark pink. Again on its side. Oh, that little stitch went out at the top. So wherever that stitch went in, I'll just come to the opposite side. Make sure it stays in place like that. And I'll do a bubblegum pink bead. Bring my bowl up. Get one on the needle like that. That one's flipped over on the other side. I want it to be centered right there. Sometimes these beads have a mind of their own. But they're so pretty, you just forgive them. And I think that's all the pink beads I need to do for now. So now let me go switch out to a one strand of green thread, and we'll do all of the green beads. I have one strand of green thread on my needle now, and I just did this bead. And now I will hop over here, and I'm going to do this sequin over here. And this is a different sequin. This one is a really pretty pink sequin. Let's see if you can see that. See that? Same thing though. It's a cupped sequin, so I'm going to make sure it's facing down. Slide it down, and then this one does have a bead to hold it on. And so I'm just going to come up through the bead and go down once. I tried to get it to lay, you know, to do a bead where it lays, you know, flat with the hole facing up. I just couldn't get it to work with the hole in the sequin too. So that one's fine. Just do one time, one pass through that green bead. And then these two are the green beads. But they are on their sides. red keeps catching on that fabric on the side and it's uh, frustrating sometimes. And there it goes. All right, that one. And this one. I think you've seen me do this enough now, so you you know what you're doing. So once I finish this one and then do yeah, I can't see the hole. And then I'll do this one over here and then all of the beads for most of this hoop will be finished. We are finally at the last little section to work on this hoop, and it's going to be just like a bead 
like Starburst. I mean, because why don't we just go out with all the sparkles? So, um, sorry, I've had to turn this a little bit um, because it, I have this in my hoop stand and I can't clamp it up here at the top, which is where I've been doing it because obviously um, you wouldn't be able to see it, but also I can't, I don't want to crush the beads. So I've had to find a place where there aren't beads on the side to put it in my hoop stand. So that's why it looks a little, a little strange. That's why it's on an angle. So um, I have one strand of the uh, DMC lighter pink thread and uh, I've already done part of it so you can see and there will be a diagram in the pattern and I've already put in some just some straight stitches of the lighter blue for the the smaller these little smaller lines and then let's do let's work on this main line right here the longest and um, it's really obviously just like all the others I'm gonna get a dark pink bead and I am, I am uh, sewing them down so that the, the thread goes across the bead, partly so the bead will sit in the right direction, and partly so that now when I want to come up on this line to sew down a bugle bead, I can come up right on that line, right next to that bead. So now I'm going to get a bugle bead, and I'm not bothering um, Partly because these beads are these bugle beads are going to be separated by seed beads, so there's no reason to do the whole couching technique. But I put a bugle bead on the thread. I'm going to slide it all the way down, hold some tension on that thread, so I make sure that bugle bead is as close up to that dark pink bead as it'll get. And I'm going to put the needle down right on the line, right at the end of the bugle bead, so it sits straight. And now I can come back again and put a dark pink bead. with the thread running, you know, sideways, perpendicular, I guess you can say, to that bugle bead. And so just continue, you know, bugle bead and then a green bead, and then this is a little tiny uh, dark blue stitch. Well, here, I'll just do that for you and show you. Let me just take a second. So this is going to be a bugle bead. right up next to that. You know what? I'm going to take that one off. I don't know if you can see it, but it has a it has a broken end on it, so it's not a straight end. So I'm just going to quickly run the needle, run that back up the needle, take it off, and get one. Don't want that one. Get one that is straight on the sides. I am just picky. That Well, that one's not straight either. Okay, this one's better. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to push that one up against there, put the needle down. I'm going to, to come up again sideways and get a green bead on the needle and go down. And then I have just a little tiny bit of this line left. So I'm going to grab my dark blue thread. And this is uh, three strands. This is just a teeny, teeny, tiny stitch. So it doesn't matter where you come up, really. You, you know, push that green bead over. Is that on your side? It's a little tiny, tiny blue stitch. is a little wonky but you know I'll live with it and then I'll pick up my pink thread my one strand of pink thread again and I will put a pink bead on the very very end so it will sit on its side like that okay and you know the these lines are just similar it's here it is right here it's one bugle the medium pink bead a longer stitch of three strands of blue thread and then um, a green bead I really like the way this part turned out because it's like it's just like a big sparkly starburst right over the moth's head 
Um, but that will finish up this moth stitch along. I want to thank you guys for joining me. I, I always say I hope that you had as much fun making it as I did working on it and designing it and teaching it to you. And so uh, please send me your progress photos. I love to see those. It's great to see the community, the stitching community, all working on something at the same time and having fun. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.